Hello YouTube, and today we are talking about DDR controller timing management. How do we design a flexible DRAM controller that can operate on any DRAM on any user conditions of read-write command requests? And how does this complex timing orchestration take place? Well, why is DDR timing so difficult? DDR timing is essentially a synchronous timing interface that is wrapped around an analog core. The analog core is just a bunch of very small capacitors that carry the information in bits, zeros and ones as a charge on these capacitors. And the essential job of the DDR uh, memory or the controller is to control these charges so that the charges continue to retain the values that we are storing into the memory. And to motivate these timing parameters, let's just quickly look at how this DRAM goes about its business. So first off, the DRAM consists of these capacitors as we talked about, but they are organized in something called a row. Each row is a bunch of bits that can be read in a burst, and these bursts are columns. So in a sense, you open a row, you can read a bunch of data on that row, in terms of bursts or successive bursts you can read and write and eventually you have to close this row and open another row this is a very basic idea and a very basic concept that originated many decades ago ddr memories have always operated on this concept but eventually this got more and more complex as we try to go to higher and higher speeds and to be able to open data across bunch of these rows now we have a concept called banks and banks allow you to open a row in that bank whereas without closing that or pre-charging that row you can go ahead open another row in another bank and so it allows for a higher level of parallelism and allows for so much more data transaction now just to look at the amount of parameters here just look at there's almost a dozen parameters here TRC, TRAS, TRP, TRCD, TRTP, TWR, and so on and so on. There's so many timing parameters that the controller is seamlessly handling for us. That's incredible. Now, um, just to look at a few of these, let's look at TRC. TRC is a timing that is on a bank and it's between activation and activation. Um, the command scope for TRAS is activation to pre-charge. TRP is pre-charge to activation. So there is timing parameters for almost every action that happens. It's very well orchestrated inside the DRAM to make sure the charge doesn't leak, charge doesn't go down so that you have corruption in the memory core. Now, let's look at how the memory goes about doing its business. There is obviously a state machine that's controlling each of these transactions, the state machine has the following states. There's an idle state, and once again, this is the state inside each bank. Right? Each bank has its own state and is being maintained by the memory and the controller working in tandem. So the bank has an idle state, and when you give an activate command, it activates, when it's active, it can do a read or write, and then eventually, Reading or writing can also be translated to a pre-charge, which is close that row and open another row, you can go back to idle and so on. There's also commands like read A, write A, where once you write, you can automatically pre-charge, or once you read, you can automatically pre-charge. There's also burst possible, so if you're reading, you can continue to read, if you're writing, you can continue to write, and back and forth. But all these also have the hidden timing associated with it. It is not just a simple state machine that can stay there forever and stay open forever on a row. No, you have to make sure that the timing parameters are adhered to, otherwise it will lead to corruption of the memory. If the timing parameters are violated, you will have corruption. Now on the right side, we look at the controller block diagram. This is just one way of doing it, but it shows you how inside a DRAM controller things function. There is obviously uh, a command path and a data path. The data path is kind of kept independent from the command path because you can you can queue in multiple commands while the data path is still waiting for data to transact. 
the core of the command path is the command generation unit that will produce these commands that go into the memory to fetch or to store data. Now the command generation unit, like we show in the state machine on the left, is kind of just producing these commands. But the timing part of it is stored in the rank status machine. This status machine now contains the timing associated with each state of each bank. And this timing is what makes this whole thing work correctly and without corruption. And like we showed in the previous slide, there's so many timing parameters, but once a command is accepted, the rank status machine will then keep the state and start the counters that need to count down. And only when the counters have counted down that another legal command can be issued to that bank on that DDR memory. So let's look closely at this rank status architecture. First of all, as we said, the state machines are operating at a bank level. So each bank has a state where it is activated, where it is reading, writing, pre-charging and all that. Now you have multiple banks that are inside a bank group. So again, there are, there are timing parameters that relate to the bank group, there are timing parameters that relate to a bank, and then there could be multiple bank groups which we have to organize. And so the command machine has to work with this kind of architecture to make sure that it can query each bank status. And when a command comes that's targeting a given bank, it can query the state and the status of the, um, the machine inside that bank and make sure that all transactions work correctly. Here's a view of the DDR timing. For example, if the timing is 33310, then this timing is as follows. So you have TRP equals three, TRCD equals three, gas latency equals three, and RAS equals 10. RP would be between pre-charge and activation, once you've closed to when you can activate the bank. TRCD is when you have activated to when you can read. Gas latency is when you have read to when the data actually comes out and TRAS is between activation and pre-charge. So normally when timings are given for a given module, they could be given like that and you can kind of map them into this. Finally, as we put all this together, let's get an understanding of how this eventually comes about. Now if you look at the read diagram, timing diagram above, when the activate command for a given row is accepted, the controller has to say that this is okay. This is legal to send and activate. It'll check all the timing on that given bank and the row, make sure that that bank is okay to accept an activation. Later on in the cycle, when a read command is given and a column value is given, the controller will check the timing of that rank status machine, make sure that the read is okay to be done. Otherwise it will delay the read, make sure that the read happens when the time is appropriate. And then the data path obviously collects the data as it comes about. Once the read is enabled, then after a certain number of clock cycles, the data will come back from the memory and will be collected. Likewise on the right side, now you can see that multiple writes have been queued here and therefore the command is separated from the data side of things. When the activation happens on that given bank, activation has to be legal. When the write is given on that bank, write has to be legal. And the second write that is queued up there, its timing parameters have to mirror and so on and so on. So that is how the controller's core, which is the command machine, works in tandem with the rank architecture so that the state of the bank is incorporated into the controller's view. And by making sure that every command is either delayed to make sure timing is met or it's given in to the core, into the memory, um, if it's coming in at the right point where the state is accepting of that command, then it goes through to the memory. This is showing if the controller gets the same bank, then it has possibly um, to do serialization. And if the same bank is not ready, then it may have to delay so that the activation of the next command is serialized and so on. But if they are to the different banks, then the serialization doesn't have to happen. The controller knows that that other bank is open. Bank one's open, so it goes ahead and can go ahead do activation and carry on its business till it's pre-charging that bank and then the job is done. 
So that's it. We come to the end of this video. This video has been a short introduction to the timing and how the controller is able to bring about the timing and orchestration of the commands into the memory core. This video was based on some papers. One of the papers was Design of DDRSTM Controller by Ashfal, Yassin, and Jahid. And then the second one is a case of exploiting SALP and DRAM by Yong, Vivek, Dong, Yuk, Jamie, and Onwar. And then finally, I've got taken some inputs from Crucial, like a state machine, and, and then System Log IO has given me some timing diagrams as well. So thank you for watching this video with me. And um, I appreciate your time today. And if you can like or subscribe to my video, I would really appreciate it. Thanks once again and see you in another video. Take care and bye-bye.